And let's talk about the extrusion with axillaries, how we perform extrusion. Very often it happens that the tooth is intruded or it didn't extrude. We have noticed that in Invisalign statistics. So, for example, upper central incisors, the extrusion could be just only 18% from the plant. For example, but in reality, I have the uh, idea why Linus has problem with extrusion because a lot of the laboratories, technicians, they plan extrusion by the uh, by the end of the treatment. But what happens in the end? But it, closer to the end of the treatment, the, the Linus would not be completely equal to the archers. They will not be perfectly fitted and will not be perfectly coincident with attachments. If that happened, so the extrusion would not occur. And all the complex movements, and I attribute uh, extrusion to the complex treatments, I perform them in the beginning of the treatment, and that's why I don't have much problem with this. For example, con uh, for, like in these cases, that a canine and lateral incisor easily goes to the extrusion with a simple horizontal attachment. Then, next, one more example. We fix buttons on palatal and buccal surface of the teeth. We prescribe wearing of the elastics with a change once in 12 hours and extrusion happens very quickly. The main thing is that a liner would have place uh, uh, for the extrusion of the tooth. How to do it from the technical standpoint? We bond bracket or the button, a plastic or metallic, on the palatal or buccal side of the tooth, we do the uh, certain cutouts with the scissors in the liner and the main thing, we need to have space, vertical space, for the extrusion of the tooth. So we prescribe to the patient elastics, and I'll tell you later which one, and once in 12 hours, changing elastics, the patient would get the plant by us extrusion of the certain tooth or teeth. And like an example here, we see tooth number 42, is not very nicely uh, placed vertically, it is in inclusion from other teeth. What we can do, we perform uh, the aligner uh, with a hypercorrection in vertical uh, direction. You see I added composite here, or in the software I uh, managed to make a box of an additional layer just to have the correction and extrusion. Then the patient wears elastics and in one week, we are getting the perfect result. Another example, as you know, when we move crowns buccally, first of all, they go by their uncontrolled tilting, and additionally, they will get uh, relative intrusion and if right now the incisal edges, in, according to their vertical position, they are lower than lateral incisors, in case of the buccal proclination, they would be uh, higher if we not pre perform extrusion. That's why I plan to perform extrusion during the buccal tilting of the uh, crowns of the central incisors. And when the patient wears elastics, would get uh, the compensation of this relative extrusion, it did not occur, we just uh, pulled the incisors and, and received good aesthetics. How it looked technically, buttons from the palatal and buccal side, a, a place in the aligner where the tooth would be uh, in, in extruded and the motivated patient that would use elastics according to our prescription. Another example, here I wanted to get more uh, 
more directed extrusion so that tooth would be extruded more easily and and I displaced buttons more easily. That's how it happened. A, a, a small amount of collection of my cases with extrusion. You see a lateral incisor that has to be extruded. We create space in the uh, liner, made, make cutouts, use buttons and the result after 14 days. The same also We see that center incisor has different vertical position and thanks to the wearing of the elastics we managed to level them in vertical plane. One more clinical case. Very simple technique for getting quick and guided extrusion. What is important to know? When we use auxiliaries, it doesn't matter where we, whether they extrude the tooth or we make the derivation with a button like here or doing the same thing. We have to fix this position immediately. If uh, the next uh, series of aligners are not ready yet, so we have to come up with some temporary retainer. So sometimes I'm forced to do this kind of uh, structure. So I take the stainless steel wire, 16 by 22. I make heat treatment of the wire and then I fix it with the composite just for the patient to use it while I will not uh, uh, before, uh, pro produce next series of aligners. Usually I need one or two days. So I took off the, all the auxiliaries, buttons, elastic ch uh, chains, so that the tooth is irritated. I corrected it, but if I would let the patient wear it, it, its current aligner, I would have the relapse. So I do the impression or I do intro scanner. So I register the position that I had of the correcting of this tooth. Then I do this kind of retainer and then we invite patient for the uh, fixing of the new aligners. And only before uh, putting a new aligner we would remove this uh, retention wire. So it's very important to, uh, to preserve this pos uh, 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 position of the tooth that we achieved, otherwise it will be relapsed. So let's summarize what we need for, uh, uh, what we need for extrusion with the use of the auxiliaries. We need cutouts for the buttons, we need the presence of the space where the tooth would be displaced in the liner, we need to have space measly and distally from the tooth so the tooth would not be blocked by adjacent teeth. We need to have a space in an occlusal direction so uh, there will be no premature contact with antagonists. And the elastics that I prescribe, usually this one eighth of an inch, 3.5 ounces and with a change every 12 hours. And I uh, I give to my patients Ormco Elastics. Here is a cheap monk and I buy you know, on eBay these kind of hooks that I give to the patient for the comfortable removing and placing of the elastics. <laughs>